Greetings that are friendly, it's me, the Necrofessor, and today, we're customizing a money! Roll the intro! Okay, let's get this money cracked open. Right, markers don't need that. Let's go ahead and examine the room. It's a vinyl toy, so it needs to be sanded down a little bit so it can hold on to the paint. Sanding sponge I got at the dollar store. This is a resin raven skull. I make these in the studio. This is epoxy sculpt. It's a self-hardening clay. You have about uh, one to three hours working time before it starts to cure. And after a few hours, it's hard as a rock. A stone-like texture that can be sanded and painted on. I'm gonna use this as a form of a adhesive. Oh, took part of my glove. Smoosh it onto its face. A beak. These are uh, glass aquarium stones. Apply that once. Okay. All right, let's slice into the eye sockets. This material is surprisingly hard to cut into sometimes. Sharp blade is recommended. While I'm cutting the eye holes, the clay on the mask is slowly curing, giving me plenty of time to work with it and readjust it as I go. Refine the eye holes a wee bit, shake out the dust. Okay, now we can begin to affix the eyes. creepy wrinkles and striations and textures within the clay itself. I'll add a nice effect to the mask later on. So it doesn't need to be too smooth, as a matter of fact. Too smooth. Contradict what I'm going for. There I am building on top of the beak itself. We reinforce it just a wee bit and to blend it into the mask more. Yes, now it's starting to take shape and look like a plague doctor. Making sure the clay is sitting on top of the uh, glass aquarium stone. Uh, just enough to hold it in place to where the stones won't want to pop out. I'm filling in the bottom of that beak just a little. Building up on the eye lenses just a wee bit more. Real quickly, you'll notice that I add, start adding these divots into the bottom base of the 
mask itself. As I'm painting, I'm just trying to not paint over the eyes too much. But if a little bit gets on there, it's no problem. I'm gonna clean that up later with the back end of a knife. You'll notice on the back that one of the uh, a wee bit of wire is exposed. That's because later on, if I feel like I want to uh, install new batteries, I can take some pliers and pull out the battery compartment, and that little bit of wire gives me the slack I need to accomplish that. Don't worry, this will all be covered up with the hood. Second coat. And the main idea is to cover up most of the stuff. A little bit showing there is a okay. Makes it look like the character is infected. This is a metal rod that was taken out of an old German cuckoo clock. This runs back here, a box is called. On top to create our scepter character. These are black doll's eyes. Just snipping them off so they can be a little bit more accommodating. Sockets. Here I'm using a sharpie to hold it in place while I sculpt on some eyelids. Again, using the back end of the brush to smooth it off. This sinks in the eyes and makes them look like they're protruding outwards. As the epoxy sculpt dries in various stages, I can start by basically blocking out the shape that I want, setting it aside, and then coming back and adding more details later. Here I am flipping it over and adding some doodly balls. These balls will act as reinforcement for the wings that we'll add later. Set that aside for a bit. This is some black leather. Uh, it's a uh, remnant upholstery leather. And uh, just trying to get a feel for how the hood is going to look. I only have this one little scrap piece of leather right now, so I want to make the best out of it. So as I cut, I want to maintain a definitive shape, keeping in mind where the center is. Here I am folding in half, 
I'm trying to get the edges to line up just a little bit. I'm adding some breaks and some holes in the leather to make it look tattered. This plague doctor has been through some stuff. And I believe the black is a perfect shade for more black. Hmm. It's fiddling with it more. The trick is to make it conform to the shape of the head. I'm pointing out these two spots that I want to hit. I'm going to run a sewing awl through that spot right there, puncturing it in the leather, because I'll be adding a rivet. And this rivet is black, and it will be hammered on uh, using a driver and a mallet on my anvil. That'll take place off screen. Okay, here I am looking for the um, the perfect sweet spot. I'm stretching the leather over the head, I'm getting it trimmed up, making it sit exactly where I want. I only got one shot at this. Once I got it stretched out firmly enough, I take the X-Acto blade and I cut spaces for the ears to pop through. A little bit of paint is scraped off of the ears, revealing some glowy green goodness, but I think that makes it look cool. And pinching the back of the hood, running that sewing all through there, reaming a hole and inserting another rivet. trim up the back. I don't want to close off the back of the hood too much because I want to still be able to access the power switch. With a unique folding of the leather and inserting of a rivet on top, it makes the top of the hood curl in in a nice way. And I'm taking a fine paintbrush and I am applying a creamed corn color. Now I'm not really paying attention too much about making it 100% perfect right and left uniform. Uh, sorry for those who are in OCD. Um, the reason was because well it would take far too much time in the first place but also because I am going for a bit of a disjointed look and having the lines be a bit uneven will help with the effect that I'm trying to go for. And that's my excuse. We'll see what I'm talking about later. Give some stripey bits to the arms. And 
off at the bottom. Taking that sewing all and getting in between the tentacles to make sure that they line up nicely. Once I get it blocked out and smoothed up just a bit, I set it aside and go back to the figure. I'm applying black again, and what I'm trying to do is focus on hitting each side of the lines, and that'll fade them into the character. Rub and buff, it's a waxy metallic substance that's used to create a nice uh, finish. And I apply it a small bit onto my finger, and as the name implies, you just rub it on and buff it out with a rag. And it creates a nice shining effect. Kind of a gunmetal uh, darkened color with a silver leaf those black and blue undertones help create a lot of nice dimension with the mask. This is a little resin raven skull that I have. Put it on a bale and I figured that would make a nice necklace for it. This is a small little ball chain that I have and here's some trinkets that I have. And let's uh, figure out something that would work as a nice utility belt for this Plague Doctor. Here you see I'm wrapping a quartz crystal in some gardening wire. And we'll twist this all around the belt. Next I have a small crucifix, a, a gear for good luck, and this sort of a chambered vial. through to twist through and affix it to the belt. And it fits in perfectly. And then back to our little creature. A quick paint job with the midnight blue and the black. Being very rough and uh, erratic with the painting scheme because uh, this creature uh, I want some of the stone texture of the clay to show through underneath. Occasionally wiping it off. Perfect. This is a little wooden disc I have. And here I am marking out where its feet are going to be. This is some uh, leather antique gel finish, which is used for leather, but I think it'll work nicely as a gel stain for this wood disc. Here I'm scoring the bottom of the feet with the knife, as well as the wood disc itself. And this is E6000 adhesive. And by working all that together, uh, I'll have something to grab onto. Here I'm inspecting it. It looks pretty nice. And then I realize that I should probably put it down, because it's the glue's not quite done drying. Plague Doctor at Scepter, and we're ready to go face the plague. <laughs> 